When you imagine artisans at work, you might hear the sound of a metal worker's anvil or a woodworker's saw, but not in Mary Sullivan's studio. She quietly creates works of art in her own natural shop, and as Rob Wiles discovered, she preserves a skill that's not seen too much these days. Think about books these days, you might think of Kindle. No paper, no printing at all. Or you might think of books like this, of course, colorful, mass printed books, really nice. These were donated to a group called Bookham, whose idea it is to get a book to every kid in Davidson County who needs one. But there was a time when books, all books, were not mass produced and printed like these. They were made by hand. Yeah, that's right, by hand. And it's lucky that there's still a few artists who do that, even today. Mary Sullivan spends a lot of time dealing with paper. That's part of the gig when you're a bookbinder, a skill that grabbed her attention while she was working as an artist at Hatch Showprints in Nashville. And she saw a co-worker actually making a book by hand. Initially, when I was looking at this woman who was making books out of just scrap paper that we had lying around, I don't think it ever occurred to me, and I was in my mid-20s, you know, it never occurred to me that books had ever been made by hand before. And it just dawned on me that, uh, you know, wow, we take books for granted. For Mary, there's just something about books. So she decided to make them her profession. Just the, the tactility of the process, being able to produce something from start to finish, I think there's a lot of appeal in the control of that process. And then uh, the historical nature of bookbinding and, and the fact that it's been around with us for so long. I mean, it's something that we have in invented to document our language and our history and our hopes and our dreams. I think that really appealed to me as well. Mary went off, got a master's degree in her chosen art, and hung out her shingle. My books are designed um, to be written in. So everything from the materials that I choose to the, uh, the structures, the binding structures, how they're put together, um, they all help inform the process so that when I make a book at the very end, everything has to function properly because when you read a book, you're holding a book with two hands. You know, you're sitting down, you're reading the book. Sometimes you might you know, try to pry open a little paperback novel with one hand while you're drinking coffee. But for the most part, when you're reading a book, you're holding it with two hands. So if there's any uh, fight in the spine, you have two hands to help keep it open so that you can read. But when you're writing, like if you're writing in a journal or an accounting ledger or uh, you know, a sketchbook, you're holding the book with one hand or holding the page down with one hand but you're writing with the other, so the book can't fight you. And so the way that I design my books is so that while you're using them, they operate in such a way that you don't have to fight them. Because if you're fighting a binding, it means that you're potentially danger, you know, endangering the actual spine. And so because I design mine the way that I do, not only are they gonna function properly, but they're gonna last longer because they're designed to function that way. But I think people like purchasing books from me because they they get to know me and they understand the process and they appreciate the work and the time and the effort that goes into making each individual book and they know it's going to last. Because, um, you know, I think the, the vast majority of people are satisfied with going to box office or bo big box stores and buying books and that's just fine because I'm not in competition with those because I can't make what they make because I'm not a machine. But machines can't make what I make because I'm not a machine. And there are a lot of uh, finer details that I can do and a lot of thought that goes into what I do that, uh, that makes my book special. Mary's books are so well put together and so pretty, it's not surprising that... But then I started getting requests for books that you could wear. And so I started going smaller and I started using other materials. And so that uh, developed into miniature book earrings and uh, miniature book necklaces and um, holiday ornaments as well. All completely functional so you can ride in them. A friend uh, of a friend uh, was giving birth to their first son and their co-workers wanted to purchase them something special and present it to the new mother. And so they sort of coordinated with the nurses to get one of my books and put the newborn's fingerprints 
in the book on every page. Ah, that's a good story. Just like the story behind the name Mary chose for her business, the Crowing Hens Bindery. Unusual, but actually a homage to Mary's great-grandmother, Georgia Marguerite Cassute, who was a bit of a rebel, who got teased as a kid, and whose own mother used to caution her by reciting, Whistling girls and crowing hens will always come to some bad ends. Now, Mary herself took some ribbing as a child for her love of climbing trees, and her own mother used to comfort her with Georgia's story. But she ended up living a very fulfilling, independent, creative life, and she was just herself. And so the bindery in and of itself is dedicated to all of the crowing hens that sort of blazed a trail before me and for all of the crowing hens that are who they are. Yeah, Mary Sullivan knows who she is, and that is a top-notch bookbinder.